my son. Never show mercy. They are prey. We are predators. Boys, your mother is dead. She died because you sent her away. She was weak, sick in her mind. You know my business, yes? Power is about strength. If you show weakness, you will give our enemies an opening. Like his mother, leave him. What happened that day? I stared death in the face, and for the first time, I saw my true self. Tell me about this hunter. They say he uses a connection with animals to track his prey. And once you're on his list, there's only one way off. The six of us, there's only one of you. There's six of you now. Why do you hunt? My father puts evil into the world. I take it out. I think you have some kind of honor. You are exactly like our father. Just another man hunting for a trophy. We're murderers. Isn't that what he taught us? You don't get to do that to me anymore. Mr. Teglin? Mr. Teglin? Where's Mr. Teglin? Oh, you're standing in him. You're a goddamn lunatic. Oh, you just figure that out now? There is an animal in each one of us. Don't you want to know why they call me the rhino? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel and Sony just released a new Kraven the Hunter trailer with Aaron Taylor Johnson's new Kraven. It's part of all the Spider-Man spinoff movies that Sony is developing in the Venomverse. This is located in Venom's universe along with the Morbius movie. Pretty much any other movie they're doing, like the Madam Web movie, will also be located in this universe as well. They're basically slowly introducing more villain movies. This is going to be rated R. So there is like a red band trailer. I'll do a video for that because there'll be some separate footage in that. Just a little bit more hardcore as you'd expect. So be sure to subscribe to get that. There's so much stuff to talk about in this trailer. Like you can make all the jokes you want. It's Morbin time. It's Craven time. I do think the idea that they're going to let this be rated R, like Venom should have been rated R, Venom let there be Carnage, like Carnage should have been a rated R movie, makes me a lot more hopeful for this Craven the Hunter movie than say for like Morbius. There is a lot of Spider-Man references in here, but not quite as crazy as in the Morbius trailer. So I don't think they're going to be cutting a ton of Spider-Man stuff out of this between the trailer and the actual release later this year. But it will be interesting to see how they tie all the Spider-Man related stuff and references into this and how they tie it to the Venom movies as well. Probably some kind of crazy post credit scene. I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out, but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. There's a couple big Spider-Man villains in this too, as you probably noticed, like the Rhino, for example. So we'll just start at the beginning of the trailer and work our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments and how this is connected to all of the Spider-Man movies. They start the trailer with him as an adult getting ready to go after a car standing on the ledge here. You notice he's running through traffic barefoot. He does have low level powers, like think of Captain America super soldier level powers. Not quite as strong as someone like Spider-Man, for example, but way stronger than normal human. Probably one of the other big reveals of the trailer is that Russell Crowe, of all people, is playing his father. Did not expect Russell Crowe to show up in a Sony Spider-Man related movie. Part of the idea in the trailer is that he's training them to be as hardcore as he is. Like he has this philosophy. He talks about their mother, which is a bit of a comic book reference to Craven's mother went insane and his father put her in an asylum. 
During the full red band version of the trailer, they actually discuss that, like you see what seems like their chateau as they talk about their mother being sent to an asylum going insane. It sounds like based on the way they talk about her in the trailer, she went to the asylum and died there, and that's why they're pissed off at their father. But that's part of the idea. You see him arguing with his brother, who is playing the chameleon from the comics, about how bad their father is. You're turning into our father, basically. Which is a very common trope of these father-son superhero stories, even for villain origin stories, too. They're trying to position Kraven in the trailer as more of an anti-hero type of character, the same way they did with the Venom character. So the whole idea is they want Russell Crowe as his father to seem way, way worse, and probably the main antagonist of the movie, if not the Rhino. All the different crews that he's taking down, all these different people, sound like they're associated with his father, because as he's talking to his brother, the chameleon, he says, our father put all this evil in the world, I'm trying to take it out of the world. So it's like he's going after all of his father's people. And the rhino is one of those people, like you see when he's a young boy here, when Kraven is getting his powers, his origin story, you see the rhino character, before he becomes the rhino, standing next to his father. You see them down in Africa, hunting big game, his father's trying to teach him how to hunt as a boy. Then the way they're explaining his powers, his origin story here, is that he somehow bonds with the animal, like the animal DNA bonds with his DNA, as opposed to the comics where it was more of a potion that he took that gave him his powers. Like he's hunting this lion and almost fails, it almost kills him, but then somehow he bonds with his blood and that gives him his connection to animals, part of his powers, his animal-like powers, so to speak. You kind of get the reference here, like he was bitten, like Spider-Man was bitten, he got the spider bite that gave him his powers. Kraven was bitten by the lion, he got his powers from the lion bite, so to speak. Later in the timeline, you see the rhino character before he's become the rhino, asking about this quote-unquote hunter, so it sounds like he doesn't know what's going on with Kraven yet, but it sounds like he's somehow associated with Kraven's father, so it's this whole idea that Kraven's going after all of his father's people, but his father's people, like the rhino, don't quite know what's going on at first. This mystery badass with all kinds of crazy powers is coming after all of us. Who is it? Oh, it's right. It's your son. This person is foreigner from the Spider-Man comics, but he's mostly a Silver Sable associate, like they were married at one point. The interesting thing is that Sony was making a Spider-Man Silver Sable spin-off movie along with a Black Cat solo movie, but at one point they combined those two characters in the same movie, but they haven't said much about that recently. There were a couple easter eggs like Black Cat showed up in that Spider-Man No Way Home ending scene where all the characters from the multiverse almost wound up on planet Earth like all the silhouettes you see, Black Cat was one of them. Part of the idea is that you see comic book accurate versions of the characters and that's meant to tease some of the movies that they're working on like the Rhino, the comic book accurate Rhino shows up in that too. This is also meant to be a comic book accurate Kraven, now we're seeing the Kraven movie with that character on screen with another version of the Rhino. This scene is part of the footage that they showed off at CinemaCon earlier. I talked about this in one of my first look videos a while ago. The version they showed off at CinemaCon was like the R-rated red band version. It was way more hardcore. He winds up biting one of these dudes' noses off and uses a trap, a really medieval looking old school trap on another one. There was an image of him in the vest earlier that leaked that people weren't really crazy about. We'll see what it actually looks like when we see him running around in this. Later in the trailer, he does get a comic book accurate version of the costume, and I think that's what people wanted to see, so they are showing it in the trailer, so he does eventually look a little more comic book accurate. The claw he wears around his neck on the necklace is meant to be from the lion that almost killed him and gave him his powers. Looks like he got super ripped for this role. This is Calypso, who's a longtime Kraven associate in the comics. She's a voodoo priestess. It also kind of drives his hatred of Spider-Man with a lot of her magic powers. This is another version of the Rhino later in the timeline, seemingly before he's become the Rhino. It seems like he's still talking to Calypso when he says he's taking the evil that his father put in the world out as he's taking this Rhino's crew out. It's not really clear what kind of an organization his father runs. During the comics, his family, the Kravenoff family, were former aristocrats. They might be saying their backstory in the movie is that they used to be former aristocrats and his father just runs this international evil organization that he's slowly dismantling. Part of the idea with his tragic backstory is that his family came from wealth and power, but that slowly, wait, like their family lost their wealth. Talking to a version of the chameleon, it'll be interesting to see if he also becomes the chameleon during the course of this movie too, like he gets his origin story as well. I remember when Spider-Man Far From Home came out, that mystery character, people thought that he was going to be the chameleon so much. There were so many fan theories about this. Just turned out to be a random dude. When he's an adult, he goes up against his father. It'll be interesting to see if that's going to be one of the big final battles of the movie. They're hyping up this Rhino fight like it's going to be a big thing too, so the Rhino might wind up being the actual final villain. You can let me know in the comments what you think. 
Love all the spiders, obvious Spider-Man reference. Part of the idea is that he absolutely hates, he hates spiders. So then he meets Spider-Man and that just drives his hatred of him further. One of the reasons why he started fighting Spider-Man initially is just because he was searching for another challenge. I think they're trying to give it more of a basis in reality in the movie. Like if he eventually does go after Spider-Man with a version of the Sinister Six that assembles, they're trying to create a better reason for that within this Venom universe. But we're still kind of wondering who that Spider-Man is going to wind up being. Will it be Tom Holland's Spider-Man? Will it be Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man or Amazing Spider-Man? However you want to think about that. I did a bunch of videos when Morbius came out because there were so many Easter eggs pointing to Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man. And during Amazing Spider-Man 2, there were a lot of things that were meant to set up a lot of the stuff that they're doing now in the live action movies. Like had they done Amazing Spider-Man 3 in their original Sinister Six spinoff movie that they planned on doing, they would have been doing this stuff years ago. One of the funny things here though is it seems like he's being engulfed by spiders. I think they might just make him terrified or just really pissed off when he thinks of spiders in the future. Just that kind of funny thinking about it that way. Oh, it's not you, Peter Parker. He doesn't hate you. He just hates spiders. So anytime you put the mask on, he's really going to hate your guts. A good way to think about this is like an Indiana Jones versus snakes kind of situation. Like a very bad quote unquote encounter with a ton of spiders left him sour on spider for the rest of his life. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Then he puts on the comic book accurate costume. And if it wasn't clear, this is a lion's mane, the lion's mane that almost killed him, that he turned into this jacket, basically. Teglin isn't a comic book character. It just seems like it's part of his father's organization and some person that he comes to kill. Then they have the rhino reveal explaining that he's going to be a biological version of the character and they'll use a serum to transform him into the rhino. You guys can let me know what you think of that. I'm sure there's going to be some people out there that were like, I actually enjoyed Paul Giamatti's version of the mechanical rhino, even though it was meant to be so comical and over the top. I feel like whatever they do in this movie, they can only go up. Like you can only go up from that Paul Giamatti performance. Even Kevin Feige, when he gave notes on Amazing Spider-Man 2, was talking to Amy Pascal like, here, you should change a couple things here. These parts of the movie work. These parts don't work. And they took some of his notes, not all of them. One of his notes was he was confused why they were trying to work in the rhino stuff. Like, why are you using this Paul Giamatti rhino stuff? You should just cut that out. One of the things that um, has done with that show was so brilliant. And As you can imagine, they did not listen to him. They left the rhino stuff in Amazing Spider-Man 2. But because they had that big Sinister Six teaser with the Vulture and Morbius in the Morbius post credit scene, I feel like we're going to continue that theme in these post credit scenes for the Craven movie. There'll be some scene tying him to some of those characters, maybe not all of them, but at least one of the other characters. One of the interesting details, though, is that in the trailer, you notice him scratching names off the list. Don't be surprised if he has Spider-Man or Venom or one of the other Sinister Six characters' names on his list, like Morbius's name on his list. So let me know if you think that's how they're going to tease him crossing over with Spider-Man or Venom or these other Sinister Six characters. That would seem the logical way to do it. If you spotted any other Spider-Man or Venom references or Easter eggs in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Really big reminder too, Marvel Secret Invasion Episode 1 is releasing this week. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. My Episode 1 video will post on Wednesday. Click here for the Flash movie alternate ending in a bunch of Superman deleted scenes, alternate post credit scenes with a bunch of Justice League characters, and click here for my brand new Secret Invasion trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.